Hey everybody, I'm Chef Tom with ATBBQ.com and this is the Jalapeno Popper Stuffed Burger. Now you may be familiar with the idea of a Juicy Lucy burger. We've done one in the past on the channel. It's this burger that comes from Minneapolis. It's essentially two patties stacked together and there's cheese stuffed inside. Well, we're gonna utilize that idea today, but instead of putting just cheese on the inside, we're gonna put all the ingredients for a jalapeno popper. So we're gonna start off with that filling that goes inside the burgers. And we're starting with a couple ounces here of sharp cheddar, about one cup. And then double that, four ounces of cream cheese. Next we have our jalapenos. And I'm just gonna go ahead and de-seed these. Certainly don't need a stem in there. We'll go ahead and get rid of all that pith too and just dice up the flesh. So obviously a jalapeno is a little large to try and stuff into the burger. So that's why we're gonna dice these up and mix them together with the rest of our filling ingredients. So we're making a quantity for four burgers today, which means each burger is going to get half of a jalapeno. Another ingredient we like to incorporate into the filling is bacon, but instead we're going to put that straight on the burger because it's usually on the outside of the jalapeno popper anyway. Now we're going to need a little barbecue rub, so we're going to use the yard bird today and we're going to estimate about two teaspoons. And the easiest way to get this mixed up is just to get in here with our hands and mash it all together. And just keep working your God-given spatulas until this is all well incorporated. All right, so that's our filling quantity for four burgers. So what I'm gonna do here is go ahead and portion them out. And then each one of these quarters, we just wanna kinda of form these into a disc, a shape that can fit inside of our burger patties. I'm placing them back into the bowl because while we form our burger patties, we wanna chill these down. And chilling them just really helps with the formation of the patty. They're gonna have plenty of time to melt inside the grill so we don't have to worry about keeping them at room temperature. All right, back into the fridge. So here we've got two pounds of 80-20 beef that we need to divide into eight quarter pound patties to make our four burgers. That's a lot of math. You can rewind, it's okay. Now always check out our written recipes. If you click the show more underneath the video description, you can always click that link to our website so that you can see every detail and every description for these recipes. So we've got those now knocked down to quarter pound portions. And these we're gonna flatten out nice and thin and spread them out so we can get that disc of our stuffing inside. So here's how I handle this usually. Ball it up, press it super flat, and then bring it back together. You'll wanna work fast so that you don't start melting the fat because the beef's gonna become a lot harder to handle. It doesn't have to be perfect though, because we'll actually really shore up the sides once we get the filling in there. But they're not pretty now, but they don't have to be. Let's go get our filling. Seriously, how lazy are you? All right, so dead center of each one, and we're gonna pick the uh, top up and put it on there. And then this is where we start to really make it look nice. Press down firmly so it's fully encompassed, and then you can straighten up the sides. There we go, easy enough. So our burgers have softened up a little bit now, which is to be expected. 
I just want to let them kind of firm back up in the fridge for maybe about 15 minutes. Try and really make sure these sides are pressed together while you're at it too. Well, today we're cooking on the Yoder Smokers YS640S pellet grill. We're running at 450 with hickory pellets, and we've got indirect and direct cooking zones. So we can get a nice sear on these on the grill grate panels and then move them off to indirect to finish. I've also got our damper pushed into about halfway so we can kind of isolate the fire here and then create that indirect zone. We're just gonna take our burgers and go right above the fire. And we're just gonna do a nice light dusting of that yard bird on the outside, just for a little extra color and flavor. Now we're working from the outside and the inside. Not too heavy though. Well, these are looking really good, 10 minutes in. Releasing now from the grill grate so we can flip them. Oh, I should have done these guys together. I made it hard on myself. There we go. A little resistance. The great thing about these grill grate spatulas is they're designed to go ahead and just scoop that food right off the grate. It's been another 10 minutes and our burgers are looking really nice but still temping a little bit low, uh, a little below our ideal temperature of about 155 to 160 so we're just going to move them off to indirect. So this guy I can see I'm losing a little filling out the other side so I'm just going to flip it. We can try and capture some of that one. It's not a total loss. That one's looking good. Oh yeah, we just got one troublemaker. So now when we're temping these, we're still gonna go to the center. We want, we want this to be plenty hot. That cream cheese, that cheese is touched raw meat, so we want it to come up to about 155 to 160, and we've got about 20 degrees to go. All right, we're probing now. It's been 30 minutes. We're coming up past that Yep, we get right there in the center up to 155. And in that range, up to 160, we'll call it good. So while the burgers were cooking, I went ahead and fried off some bacon and toasted off some pretzel rolls. Pretzel rolls are great for this because they're dense and they can handle all of that burger that's gonna go on top of there. Another great option would be ciabatta. Now from here, we just have a few finishing touches. Even though we've got a nice molten cheese center in our burgers, I wanted to finish it off with a little bit of sauce. And we just went over on our tips and techniques video how to make buttermilk ranch. So we're gonna be using some ranch mixed with barbecue sauce, a barbecue ranch. And we're gonna dress it on top of thin shaved celery. So I'm just gonna take a vegetable peeler here and we'll shave off some celery. I kind of think of this as like what you would get with your buffalo wings. A little bit of ranch and a little bit of celery. And to me, that just sounded like a good idea when it comes to uh, jalapeno poppers as well. The barbecue ranch is super easy to put together. You just want equal parts ranch and barbecue sauce. For that barbecue sauce, we're using the Big Rick's original. I like something pretty classic here, tomatoey and sweet. All right, so we've got our pretzel rolls down. We hit them with just a little bit of sauce on the bottom bun. So next we're gonna to top that with a couple pieces of bacon. So next we're coming in with our burger. Top it off here with our celery. Might seem a little nutty, but we've had some time on our hands during this quarantine stay at home time. And it's a little more interesting than lettuce again. And then just one more drizzle of our ranch barbecue sauce, or barbecue ranch sauce, however I'm supposed to say that. Call it what you want, it's delicious. All right, there we have it. Jalapeno popper, stuffed cheeseburger. All right, let's get in there and check out the cross section. Woo! Looks like somebody put a jalapeno popper inside that burger. Oh, 
That tastes like a jalapeno bopper with barbecue sauce and ranch. So good, I got choked up. Man, it's got great crunch. I think pretzel bun is the right way to go. It's holding up to everything. I mean, all that stuff oozing out of there, and we're not losing any of it. Bacon's great. Bacon's always great, though. Got crunch. Got texture. It's got flavor. We got it all. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to check out atbbq.com for all the products featured in today's video. If you enjoyed the recipe, hit that subscribe button. If you have any questions or comments, or there's anything you'd like to see me cook, let me know in the comment section down below, and let's be good to one another. For more recipes, tips, and techniques, head over to atbbq.com slash the sauce. All things barbecue, where barbecue legends are made.